Hello everyone, this is Noralyn Oligo Sarma. Um, napansin niyo po na um, I've been talking a lot um, with my posting at saka sa aking content about international students now nowadays and also um, about tourist visa. Hindi hindi na ang dami po um, honestly. Uh, uh, I have three things na nakaka na encounter ko dito sa aking profession na to one is uh, for mga sa mga tourist visa holders ang dami po lalo na mga Filipino. Pangalawa is yung uh, fraudulent situation sa mga international students and hindi lang po yung fraudulent eh yung mga napapasubong pumupunta dito ng mga international student they thought, hindi nila alam na coming here in Canada as international student walang or 90% walang nagsabi sa kanila yung mga tumulong sa kanila na when you come here as international student walang permanent residence pathway po yun as of the moment however <clears throat> while the system is far from perfect corrective measures are underway to protect international students in Canada I for one am watching this space both nervous and hopeful um, this is the important news that we have. Canada unveils a stringent measure to combat international student fraud. In a significant move, Canadian Immigration Minister Mark Miller has announced a comprehensive plan to address the pressing issue of international student fraud. This comes on the heels of a thorough investigation into more than 100 cases involving counterfeit admission letters and the government is leaving no stone unturned to tackle to this problem. Effective December 1, 2023, stringent verification process. Under the new rules, all post-secondary designated learning institution, which is the DLIs, uh, will be mandated to conduct um, a verification process for every applicant's letter of acceptance. This verification is now a non-negotiable prerequisite for obtaining a study permit. Prioritizing quality to promote higher standards of services, support, and outcomes for international students, Canada is in the process of establishing a system that will give preference to institutions meeting this criteria. Applicants from such institutions will find their study permit application fast track. So, ibig sabihin po, dapat ang pag-inrollan ninyo ay sa mga places na i-designate na ng immigration. Unfortunately, with all this um, news na mangyayari this coming December 1, 2023, which is next month, kawawa yung mga small-time school. Hindi na sila ma, uh, wala na mag enroll sa kanila na international student. Hindi na sila mabubuhay. Kasi, ang sabi dito, applicants from the institution na dinesignate ng immigration will find their application fast track. So, mas mabilis. Of course, if I'm an international student, anong gagawin ko? I would definitely enroll dun sa designated learning institute na binigay ng immigration or nirecommenda ng immigration. And most of these schools are big schools, not the small-time schools. So, uh, unfortunately, um, ang pinanggalingan ng mga fraudulent um, uh, letter of acceptance ay mga places na mostly or actually the places na maliliit. And also the problem with small-time um, school um, they don't return back the money. So, unfortunately, yun ang style nila. But in the big schools, binabalik po nila yung pera. So, that's a good thing. Of course, less uh, administrative fee. So, post-graduation work permits. Criteria for post-graduation work permits are currently under review. So, I believe if that's under review, that means they are trying to actually do something. Para po sa ikabubuti ng mga international students. So that's the good thing right now. So be excited guys. So in the coming months, changes will be introduced to benefit Canadian employers and align with regional and francophone immigration goals. So ibig sabihin yung mga French people yan. Okay, compassion for victims. 
recognizing the predicament of approximately 700 international students, primarily from Punjab or India, uh, who were defrauded by unscrupulous institutes and the government is reconsidering deportation for these victims. The aim is to prevent further punishment for those who have already suffered. Economic impact? The international education sector contributes a staggering 22 billion annually to Canada's economy. This surpasses the country's exports of auto parts, lumber, or aircraft and supports over 200,000 jobs. In 2020, a temporary drop in international student resulted in a significant GDP loss of over 7 billion. Honestly, international student is a billion dollar business here in Canada. Canada's commitment. So here's the commitment of Canada. This measure reflects Canada's commitment to protecting genuine international students from fraud while ensuring its continued status as a leading international student destination. This action also aligns with Canada's economic growth and immigration objectives, making them a crucial part of the country's future plans. So, stay tuned for further updates on this developing story. December 1 po yun. So, make sure like, follow my social media accounts kasi dyan po ako nagpo-post ng aking mga updated um, uh, news para sa immigration. I hope everybody has a good, good um, Monday and uh, have a good week, guys, and um, God bless. Again, this is Norlin Oligo Sarma, your licensed immigration consultant. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.